Hello friends, my name is Marines. Last year I had the idea to put together a video featuring many different people's favorite and least favorite reads for the year. I know that people often do this on their personal channels, but I thought it would be interesting and entertaining to see a bunch of picks in each category in one shot. Hey guys, it's Kirsty from Melbourne on my mind. As you guys may or may not know, I have read over 400 books this year already, so picking my favorite was really, really difficult for me. I actually narrowed it down to two and I went with the one that I've gone with solely because periodically in my life I'm like, damn, that book was really good. And like the other one was amazing too, but I don't have those same moments of like just stopping and suddenly thinking, holy shit, that book was amazing. So that book was Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. If you're not aware of this book, it is basically a retelling of Jane Eyre, but set in a world where Jane Eyre exists. So the character of Jane Steele goes through many similar life events to Jane Eyre, but Jane Eyre kind of influences her decisions in some ways. It's her favorite book and she learns a lot from the character of Jane. So that was a really interesting touch. But I also just really love the fact that anytime Jane Steele runs into male characters who are douchebags, yeah, she straight up murders their faces off. It's amazing. Hey everyone, my name is Joss. You may know me from my booktube channel, Scoobles Reads. So I read five really standout books in 2016, and if you've ever seen any of my videos, you will know that I cannot go one video without talking about at least one of them. So after a really long and arduous process of trying to choose one book that was my favorite of 2016, I decided on Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. Jane Steele murders people who commit violent and heinous crimes against women. So something that I really loved was the commentary around misogyny, but also how the guilt and anguish was portrayed and the way that it was written. There is also a little bit of history that is woven into the story, and that specifically is the Anglo-Sikh War that took place in the mid-1800s, and that started a subplot that involved some mystery. Finally, I loved the diverse cast of characters that Jane Steele had. It had people from different races, different ethnicities, different sexual orientations. And if that is not enough to convince you to read this book, there are also some very swoon-worthy romances and a couple of side romances that were also equally just filled with passion and love and angst. And the language that was used when these things were being described were just so passionate and ugh and like, oh, I can't even. It was just everything. Hey guys, I'm Mav from Bookworm Wonders. My favorite book of the year was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. And first of all, this is the most gorgeous book I have ever seen in my entire life. And also, like, this is the most creative thing I've ever seen. Like, I would buy a hundred of these books just so I could, like, put them all black on my shelf and it would be gorgeous. Second of all, I love the Grisha world. I hardly ever reach for fantasy books, but Lee Verdugo created this world with so much care and so much attention to every single detail that it feels so magical, but at the same time, you get such a vivid image in your head of all the places that are described. And third of all, I love romance. I don't think I could ever read a book without even a little bit of romance in it. And Nina and Matthias are by far the most amazing and my favorite couple ever. Every single character in this book has such a strong backstory and you understand their motivations so well and you sympathize with them and they complement each other so well. I don't think anybody could have written a squad as amazing as the tracks for this story. Hello booktube! This is Becky from Becky Writes and this is Becky Reads. My favorite book of the year was a hard one. I had a hard time picking and I really have... T I... Oh, But the one I'm going with is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo because I love these characters. Now I haven't read Cook a Kingdom yet so that one might surpass this if I finish it before the end of December but Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo is my favorite. I love the characters. I love the world building. I love their interactions. I love the unspoken rules of the dregs and I love the complicated gray, morally gray nature of most of the characters. I think it's so well done, and particularly for YA, which doesn't tend to be quite this complex. I think that Lee Bardugo is setting the bar at an even higher level for what YA can and is, and I just am loving this. Hi, I'm Julia from Novel Noise. My favorite book that I read in 2016 has to go to Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. This book was so beautiful. The time travel in this book was very realistic, but at the same time, the story 
storytelling of it was very exciting and enticing. The two main characters, Nicholas and Etta, both of their point of views were very strong and interesting to read. The love story between them was so perfect and beautiful. They're two very strong independent characters, but they respect each other, they admire each other, they love each other, which for some reason is so hard to find in fictional couples nowadays, but they, you could tell they really respected each other. They also had a great amount of chemistry to them, which was beautiful. The world building in this book was unreal. I really felt like I was in every single time period that they went to, and the overall writing was just very lyrical and beautiful, and ugh, read this book if you haven't. It's a little bit chunky, but it's so worth it, guys. It's so worth it. Hi, I'm Dazzles. I do gaming and book stuff occasionally on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube under Dazzles, as well as Twitter, and pretty much if you find a Dazzles, there's a good chance it's me. I'm going to say that my favourite read of 2016 was probably The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I don't know, it was just a really enjoyable book. Once more, there was that level of predictability in there, and I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what happened in some of the events, but I think maybe that's, that's for the best. I find, I find the whole concept behind the powers that the kids have to be very, very interesting, and Honestly, I really need to get a hold of the other books in the series because I'm told that it gets even better. So, I, yeah, yeah, no, it's my favourite. It's fun. It's fun, but just devastating at times. My soul... my soul died. My favourite book of the past year was A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. I genuinely did not enjoy A Court of Thorns and Roses, but A Court of Mist and Fury was action-packed. It has developed and complex characters. Nobody was completely good, completely evil. Everyone was morally grey. It set up such a good premise for the rest of this series, which suddenly has gotten a lot more books announced in it. Sarah J Maas just knows how how to write these really intense scenes but not only that she also knows how to write romantic and calm and serene scenes and how to weave from one scene to another and make the banter and the dialogue flow so well I laughed out loud multiple times during this book and I never laugh at books. Like, that is an accomplishment in and of itself. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Neve Gita and my channel name is Dulce Reads. My favorite book of the year has definitely got to be Angel Fall by Susan E. This is a pretty dark book about angels and how angels started the apocalypse. And this book just makes a very interesting twists. It twists what we usually perceive angels as. We usually see them as very guiding figures, figures of salvation, but in this book they are the ones that have caused destruction on earth. This book features a very badass strong independent main character and, and also a very funny, very badass, very strong love interest. And the thing I like most about this book is the romance. I feel like um, in many books, the romance kind of overshadows the whole plot and the whole action of the story, but in this series, because this is the first book in a trilogy, that does not happen. You'll definitely get a lot more of the action and than the romance. And also, the romance in the story is not really fast-paced at all. It's not like insta-lovey. It's not like, you know, the main characters meet in chapter one and then by chapter two they're already planning their marriage. No, it's not that type of book. The romance develops in a very realistic fashion and it's great. <laughs> hey guys, this is Stephanie at Shy Notebooks. My favorite book of the year is A Study in Charlotte. Um, it just had great characters. Um, Charlotte as Sherlock Holmes was like modern and edgy and vulnerable and I just really loved her about that. Um, Jamie Watson as a Watson retelling was also really great. He was just like the spicy puppy that you really wanted to like pick up and hold and give him all of his dreams to come true. Um, and the writing was so good. You could tell that the author is a poet. Um, the lines were just so poetic and visual and concise at the same time and occasionally very sweeping. It was just really cool and you could tell that she loves Sherlock Holmes. So I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel and it is my favorite book of the year. Hi, I'm Mason at the Amazing Bookshelf here on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. My favorite book of 2016 was Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This was just a really, really sweet, 
really cutesy love story between two boys. It was kind of like You Got Mail, which I don't love, but it was improved upon. It was like a better version of You Got Mail. And Simon and Blue were just so sweet. The characters were also wonderfully written. And the ending, like there's, there's no other way to describe this book other than sweet. If you want like a light, cutesy really adorable romance between two boys then this is definitely a book that you need to look into hello my name is karina and my youtube channel is the willy sun though i'm not a book tuber so if that's what you're looking for i'm sorry my favorite book of 2016 was far from you by tess sharp because it's just not anything that I've read before. It's, um, it's a young adult mystery novel. It features a bisexual girl protagonist who is also disabled and a former drug addict. It's just so well written and it's not written in a linear way and I think that throws some people off but it actually worked really well. And it's not a love story, it's not a fluffy story, it's pretty dark actually. But it's just very, very well written and well done and crafted and I just wanted to stay a little bit longer in this world once I finished reading it. Hi everybody, my name is Rachel Hobson and you can find me under my name, Rachel Hobson. Easy peasy. Today I'm here to talk about my most favorite book for 2016 and I was really torn. I For a while I couldn't really decide if I wanted to talk about The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon or My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. In the end, I'm talking about The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I had an arc of this book, so there was like minor issues within the text itself, but nothing that really distracted me from the story. And the only other issue I had with the book is that I didn't like Daniel at first, but I did warm up to him. And that's it! Other than that, I really loved this book. I felt it was such an accurate representation of passion and heartache, and I just love how, like, unexpected things was just strewn throughout the story. And I have to say that I reacted strongest to the ending. Obviously, I can't talk about it without spoiling anything, but the ending really sold this book to me. It's not your typical fairy tale ending, but it's just... Yes. Hey guys, I'm V from Own Bee Reads, and now to shed some positive light, Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Chiapatra and Danielle Clayton. This book, oh my gosh, I have not read a book with such good representation in YA until I read that. Like, I feel like that was the first time I've really seen myself in a book. I love the way that the authors portrayed three different point of views and made them so distinct and the diversity and the way that the authors represent the LGBT characters and the characters who are not white and the characters who are more elite and the characters who aren't and it's just so amazing oh my gosh it was such a perfect read hi my name is ashley and i'm from the channel tea leaves and book bindings one of my favorite books of 2016 has been the weight of feathers by anna marie mclemore this is a ya magical realism book and it has some of the most beautiful and stunning writing i've ever read i read this back in february and since then i haven't been able to stop thinking about it and with this one book, Anna Marie McLemore has become one of my auto-buy authors. Hello, my name is Emma from Emma Tobias, and I'm here to share with you my favorite book that I read in 2016, a book that reminded me why I love to read. That book is Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. This is a YA middle grade, YA, a middle grade fantasy book, um, a book that I would not normally pick up, but a book that completely blew me away. I love this book for many reasons. I love it because the writing style is gorgeous. Tahara Mafi knows how to write a beautiful sentence. I love this book because it took me to this place called Furthermore and enveloped me into this world in a way that very few books do for, many, do for me anymore. I think the Magician series and maybe Narnia and Harry Potter are only the only few books that really do that for me. It also made me laugh, it has a whimsy to it, it has a sense of humor, it's a little dark. Those are all the things that I loved about it, but the thing that I adored about this book and the thing that made this book my favorite book of 2016 was the message. This book is about um, celebrating difference, celebrating the things about you that aren't like everybody else, and I think that's a really powerful message to tell children and to tell young people and to tell people in general. That your differences should be celebrated. Hello! 
So my name is Karen. As for my favorite book of the year, I've decided to go with Gabby, A Girl in Pieces by Isabel Quintero. I felt so protective of her as a character. Her voice was so charming and honest and refreshing and I loved every minute of this book. It deals with so many different topics which are so important to me. I felt like it dealt with everything so well without ever bogging me down with too much intensity. It was just a really lovely coming of age story where I'm watching a character who is very flawed and is not perfect all the time but she is coming into her own person and she just becomes this incredible woman. It's just one of those books that fills you with a lot of warm fuzzies and I loved it. Hola, hola guys, my name is Roxanne from the YouTube channel The Novel Sanctuary, also the Instagram The Novel Sanctuary. My favorite book of the year was When I Was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago. This book was beautiful. Here is a writer who was really able to take us into what her life in Puerto Rico was like. She deals with so many issues of what the people in the island went through without it ever feeling preachy or without it feeling like she had a checklist of things to tell you about issues that people from Puerto Rico had. It, it really creates this beautiful image of what life on the island is like, what life on the mountains is like, and it allowed me to not only be transported back to what my childhood in Puerto Rico was, but it really gave me an avenue through which I could connect more with my mother. All of the stories that my mother told me, everything that she said about what life was in Puerto Rico, I saw in this book and it was brought to life in a different way and I was, I will forever be thankful to this book for giving that to me and writing about such a beautiful beautiful life on the island. Hi, I'm Crystal Brunel from Reading Through Life in Rich in Color. I found it very difficult to choose just one title from 2016 as a favorite, but one title did stand out from the rest. I enjoyed it so much that I've read it four times already this year. Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson is an amazing coming-of-age novel. It's about August, an adult character who is looking back on her childhood and teenage years growing up in Bushwick, a part of Brooklyn, New York. I've always enjoyed biographies and memoirs. And while this is a work of fiction, it reads like memoir. And there's a powerful focus on memory. On the very first page, August explains, I know now that what is tragic isn't the moment, it's the memory. Woodson transports readers to 1970s Brooklyn. I could hear the children playing out in the streets in the summer and feel that sun beating down. I could also feel the tensions between August and her friends as they struggled to hold on to their childhood while they reached out for their adulthood, all the while facing many, many challenges as they grew up girls in Brooklyn. The writing is breathtaking, and I know that this is a book I'll be revisiting over and over again in the future. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah, and I am from the channel Sarah Ann Reads. My favorite book of the year was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I read this in the early half of the year, I wanna say it was sometime in April or May, and I absolutely fell in love with this story. The writing is exquisite, the pacing of the story is phenomenal, the characters are incredible, the development of the characters is just flawless. I have read a lot of historical fiction throughout my life. It is one of my all-time favorite genres. I've read a lot of war fiction throughout my life because that tends to be the historical fiction that I love the most. But there was something about this story that was just so unique. Both of the main characters that we interact with, the sisters, are just, they're so different. They're, they have very different personalities. They butt heads a lot and they have very different stories because of their different personalities and how they respond to the war. But they are both such compelling, wonderful, strong women that I absolutely adored. I ugly cried through a good portion of the last bit of this book. But my favorite part of this story was, in addition to those incredibly compelling characters, is the themes that are presented and the questions that Kristen Hanna sort of encourages you to ask. And it's basically the way it sort of plays out is as you were reading the story of these two characters who are dealing with war in their country, as their home has been occupied by the enemy, it causes you to ask a lot of questions like, 
how far would you be willing to go to save yourself? How far would you be willing to go to save your family or your friends or your friends' children? Or what moral and ethical lines are you willing or not willing to cross? And I have never really thought about a lot of those questions before. So in that sense, it's not an easy read. It's not something you can just sort of speed through because it really does make you just stop and think. But it is exquisite and wonderful and lovely and I highly, highly recommend it to basically everybody. But particularly if you are a fan of historical fiction, you need to pick this up pronto. Hey, my name's Maisie from the channel Sophie Wine Studios and my favourite book of this year has to be Emma by Carrie Warren. And this is just to represent but the first book, because the first book, in my opinion, was the strongest book. It was the strongest starting point for the series. This was a perfect historical fiction novel that just captured my heart. And the ship, the ship was just perfect. It had drama, romance, the right amount of each. It was so fantastical. All the scenery was on point and it was just had this atmosphere that just took you into... The story and you just you just you, you you literally were just stuck there until you finished the end of the book because it just it just kept going and you wanted to read more and know more about it. I cannot express how much I love this series and this first volume in particular. I love the art style and everything else was just fantastic. I highly recommend that this is you pick this up because this is my favorite book of 2016. Hi, I'm Kayla from Hero Pages. My favorite book of 2016 has to be The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I absolutely love the feeling I got reading this book of reading about intellectual discourse and talking about moralities of time travel and just the whole concept of the book itself. This book is beautifully written in short little chapters here and there of Harry August's life, different the different lives that he leads. I really love the feeling I got reading this book. I like books that just spark my mental capacity to think and I love it. Hi everyone, my name is Sajid from the channel Books Are My Social Life. My absolute favorite book of this year was A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. Honestly speaking, words cannot even describe how amazing this book is. All I can tell you is that the writing in this book is absolutely stunning. Ozeki does an amazing job at creating authentic characters and authentic settings and weaving in the themes and tones and emotions of this story into every aspect of the book. It's also very philosophical and existentialist in nature, tackling very dark stuff like suicide and bullying and poverty to the relationship between a writer and a reader and the concept of time. And again, words cannot even describe. This is something you need to read and experience on your own. So definitely add this to your TBR for 2017. Hi everyone, I'm Katie from Katie Loves to Read and my favourite book of 2016 was actually a novella and that was Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. This is a fantasy novella that is quite tiny but at the same time packs so much in. There's incredible world building, there's really well fleshed out characters, great representation and also a wonderful exploration of themes within the novella. It's this weird mix of whimsical and dark that just kind of caught me by surprise and creeped into my heart. I love this so much for all of those reasons but additionally it was the first time that I ever read an asexual character and I didn't realize that I was missing out that I needed to read a character like myself in a book but I did and this book provided that for me and for that reason it is extra special to me. It's something incredible to read yourself on a page and to be kind of nodding along and be going, yes, this author gets what I feel and that was just so incredibly special and so really it was no contest for my favourite book of 2016. It had to be Every Heart of Doorway by Shannon McGuire. Hi everyone, my name is Betty and my channel name is Betty Reads. My favourite book of 2016 is Black Chalk by Christopher J. Yates and it's just a psychological thriller and you, it's a mystery and you're just flipping the pages because the pace is high tension and you just want to know what's going to happen to this cast of characters that you're introduced to and the narrator himself is kind of going through a mental 
breakdown because of what's happened in the past that you're finding out as you're reading so it's just a lot of layers to the story and to the characters that you're introduced to and it was just so great and such a, a fun time and made me realize i need to read more mysteries because there's it's so gripping and it's great. Hi everyone, I'm Chris from Kids Been Laughing. My favorite book of 2016 was Last Scene Leaving by Caleb Rorick. I could not put this book down once I started it and I'm not usually a big mystery or thriller reader. I think a lot of that happens to do with this book's main character Flynn who is just really relatable and just a really fun character to follow on this mystery as he's trying to piece things together. It's also a book about self-discovery, love, friendship, and family and I think that Caleb Rorick just does some really amazing things with this book. Hello everyone, this is Thomas from SFF 180 where I mostly discuss adult science fiction and fantasy. Now every year it's the same situation too many books and not enough waking hours in the day. And yet, at the end of every year, it can be hard to make up your mind just what your favorite reads of the year have been. But here are a handful among many standouts from 2016. N.K. Jemisin followed up her Hugo Award-winning fantasy epic The Fifth Season with a sequel, The Obelisk Gate, that manages to be equally powerful while at the same time distinctive, having a far more personal and intimate focus this time, as her characters are forced to weigh issues of surviving an apocalypse with personal trust. And Charlie Jane Anders' urban fantasy All the Birds in the Sky has a style of whimsy that might not set well with some readers, but I found its odd couple story of a magic-using girl and a scientist guy to be full of genuine warmth, humor, and affection. And my pick for most fun YA title goes to Arabella of Mars, an adventure saga set in a Victorian-era alternate universe where the solar system is full of air, and people travel from planet to planet on sailing ships. It's a tale that manages to feel charmingly old-fashioned and thrillingly fresh and new at the same time. And for weird fiction fans, China Mieville's The Last Days of New Paris took the idea of art speaking truth to power to its literal extreme when a group of resistance artists and poets set off a surrealist bomb in occupied Paris to do battle against Nazi warlocks. Hi everyone, I'm Jellica from Mercury Calling. My favorite, well, one of my favorite books from 2016 was Beauty Beauty by Rebecca Perry, which is a poetry collection and it has a variety of styles and it's very beautiful. It focuses on the details and, and how the details help tell a story. And each poem is marvelous. And if you're interested in poetry, you should definitely check it out. Hey everybody, it's Shelby from Stang Books. And my favorite book this year for 2016 was Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. I was so surprised that at the end of this year, as much as I loved a bunch of my other reads, this is the book that stuck with me the most. And it's nonfiction. This book just spoke to me so much on a personal level as an introvert, how the world deals with introverts and kind of the stigma that often gets attached to being an introvert in a world of extroverts. And there's so much really wonderful research that's gone into this book and experiences the, the author Susan Cain has gone through that she brings to the table and she did a lot of discovery and research and time to look at the world and look at especially like United States culture and the way that we view people who are introverted. This book made me feel so much better about who I am and being more comfortable with myself in the world that I live in. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and normally you might find me on my channel Book Chats, or more likely wandering around Twitter under my full name, Caitlin Vanoss. So my favorite book I read in 2016 is actually one I read way back in March, and that is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This book is so many things. It's a doctor's memoir, actually a neurosurgeon to be exact. It's a search for the meaning of life when you have all the time in the world and later when you don't have all the time in the world. It's a final gift from a dying man and a truly beautiful example of the written word. I read a lot of nonfiction and everything sounds like it's going to be interesting when you read the synopsis because that's part of why nonfiction gets published. It sounds like it's interesting and it has a market. But not every nonfiction book is well written and this is one that is written so beautifully and has an amazing premise. It surprised me with how beautiful it was, with how honest it was, and with how much it was about life as much as death or medicine. I read this in March and it left enough of a mark on me to still be my number one book here at the end of the year. My favorite book of the year was My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. If I were cheating at my own video, it would be this entire series, but I have My Brilliant Friend here as a representation of this series and just a wonderful introduction to this story 
story and to these characters. This book has stayed with me since I read it in January. It was one of the first things I read in 2016 and it is still hands down my favorite book and the book that I've probably talked about the most throughout the year. It's well written, it's smart, it's discomforting at times and it's super addictive and as much as I've molded over it is not something that feels like you need to really put a lot of attention into it when you're reading it. It's just afterward as you're connecting dots and really digesting that all of these things come to light. As you're reading it, it's almost like soap opera-ish that you're so invested and so addicted and you just fly right through the story. I highly recommend it and I will be rereading it first thing in 2017. Thank you so much to everybody who participated. It was a blast to have all of you and all of their channels will be linked down in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon.